Hello and welcome to the video. This video is all about these things here, LiPo batteries. Now, two things have prompted this video. First of all was this comment from Jeff asking what is a balanced charge? We'll cover that Jeff in this video, but also my original video that's part of the RC Basics series. I'll put a link down below if you want to go and have a look at that. That video, because the way YouTube algorithm works, isn't getting found by lots of people. And if people like Jeff are asking the question, there's going to be hundreds of other people out there who don't know some of the basics for the LiPo stuff as well. And lots of people are coming into the hobby and seeing the videos on YouTube where people will put a nail through a battery, they'll short circuit it, and surprise the surprise, the battery responds uh, by bursting into flames. But you know what? It's going to. There is an awful lot of power packed inside a very small physical package, and it's not going to respond well if you physically damage the pack and puncture the cells or cause an incredibly high current to flow through it all so it overheats and gives up the ghost. So let's talk a little bit about some of the golden rules and we'll recap some of these at the end. First of all is those videos on YouTube, uh, although they get lots and lots of views, if you take care of your LiPo batteries, they'll take care of you. There are some basic tips here to make sure that you're not going to have a problem. First of all is they do store a lot of energy in a small package, so treat them with respect. Don't drop them on the floor, don't try and puncture them, uh, don't short circuit them, and if you take care of them with the way you charge and store them, they will last for years and years. Talking about storage, when you're not using these things, discharge them down to a storage voltage. Don't worry, we're going to cover all this in a minute in the slides. Storage voltage is about 3.8 volts per cell. In this little battery here, uh, hard to see with the light, but there are four cells. One, two, three, four. So this is a 4S battery, or four cells in series. Each of these cells, uh, if you charge them to about 3.8 volts per cell, you can put them down for the winter or when you're not flying that model, and that, that will sit there very happily for that period. Next thing to think about then is that the batteries that are looked after do things like storage charging, do things like balance charge them, not over discharge them, they will last for a very long time. Some pilots in the hobby treat LiPo batteries almost as a consumable uh, where you only get a handful of flights and you use and abuse them and then you go on to the next set of battery. For those of us that don't have that luxury, then you can, by being canny, and we'll talk about that in the next couple of slides, get batteries that will last you four, five, six years. And I've still got some here that will absolutely, that old and are still absolutely fine. Big tip is if you have a battery that looks like this, this is a bad one. Uh, if you have a battery that's damaged, if you have it that looks like it's puffed up like a balloon, immediately retire it, uh, discharge it completely, and then recycle it, check out your local uh, authority, council, on how you recycle these batteries. But when they look like this, or they start to look like this, you know what, they've had their chips, and you need to get rid of them. So first thing we'll talk about is the fact that a LiPo battery, it might be different from some of the other batteries that you've played with if you are coming into the hobby and you're new to all this. The LiPo battery has a really flat discharge curve. Now what that means is that when each of the cells inside a battery is fully charged, they're at 4.2 volts a cell. You will hear of high voltage packs that go to a 4.35 volts per cell, but if it is that, it'll clearly say on the pack. But 99% of the time, if you buy a pack, you're going to probably get hold of a standard LiPo pack, and then each cell is 4.2 volts. When it is completely discharged and ready to be charged again, minimum voltage per cell is about 3.5 volts. So you've only got 0.7 of a volt between the battery being fully charged and it being considered empty. Now that is one of the great things about LiPo batteries and why they're so good for the hobby. Because as a battery discharges, obviously motors turn more slowly, uh, you don't get the same speed out of a model if you're flying it. And the nice thing is, is that even at the end of the flight, uh, the kind of drop off that you see with other battery types isn't there. Now, that 3.8 volts a cell is also on this little diagram, so that is what you do. And there are charge settings on your charger. Again, we'll come on to that in a minute. But when the cells in your battery are fully charged, they're all going to be at 4.2 volts, or very close to. When the cell is ready to be 
charged again, each of the cells will be 3.5 volts. What you need to make sure is that when you are using the batteries, you don't go below 3.5 volts because you start to cause irreversible chemical changes within the cells inside the battery, and that will shorten their life and degrade their performance. So let's talk a little bit more about cells because I've talked about that a few times now. So again, a cell is one of these little silver packages and each of those cells can either be 4.2 volts fully charged as we've just looked at or 3.5 volts fully discharged. You can connect them together to make batteries that have a higher voltage. So if we have three cells together, like in this diagram, each of those have a maximum charge and they're at 4.2 volts, that means the whole pack is going to be 12.6 volts. That's what we call a 3S pack, or a three cells connected in series. That's what the 3S stands for. Now there are two connectors on a LiPo pack. The first one is uh, that's very common in the hobby now that almost everyone uses is called an XT60. That is the one that you connect to the speed controller in your model. That's where the current can be drawn from. You also have this other weird one here. This is called a balance connector. And this balance connector connects to each side of all of the cells inside the battery. And it's used by the charger to do something called a balance charge. Now what happens in a normal charge is the current is pushed through back through the XT60 through all of the cells and that electrical current is turned back into chemical energy that's stored within those individual LiPo cells and of course ideally you want all the cells to be 4.2 volts so they all do the same amount of work and they're all under the same amount of stress when you then use the pack. But it might be that some of the cells uh, are slightly better than others. Some of the cells might reach 4.2 volts first and while the other cells still at 4.17 volts. And using the balance tap allows the charger to then target those cells that are still a little bit behind the others and bring them up. So when you finish charging, it's at 4.2 volts. Now normal chargers with decent batteries, I tend to just use a regular charge because a good battery with evenly matched cells that's decent quality, uh, using a charge will get them to be almost identical every time. So I would normally plug it in uh, and use the charge cycle on a charger like this uh, every four out of five times. Now interestingly, the balance tap is still plugged into the charger when you do that because what's happening is the charger is still monitoring to make sure that none of the cells go over 4.2 volts because as we've already looked at, 4.2 volts is the maximum that each cell should be charged to. Next type of charging is the balance charge. Balance charging is doing what I've just described where not only is it going to charge up so that most of the cells are at 4.2 volts, it's then going to spend a bit of time going through the balance part of the charge cycle and it's going to target any of the cells that aren't quite at 4.2 to make sure that the pack is fully balanced. Personally with good packs I only do that every four or five times just to make sure that the pack is completely balanced and each of the cells are under the same amount of stress when I go and fly. Next mode that you'll come across is something called storage. That will charge or discharge depending on what the voltage is in the pack are down to 3.8 volts per cell and that is the level that you need in order to kind of put the battery away and for it to be happy to just sit in storage for a while. Why can't you store it at 4.2 volts? Well what happens over time is the there's a little bit of self discharge within the battery and storing it with a high voltage can accelerate that degradation that we talked about where you end up with a puffy battery that looks like it's uh, been blown up like a balloon. So it's always better when you are not using a battery to put it down to a storage charge. The way I tend to do it is when I come back from the field I will put all of my batteries on a LiPo discharger just to make sure that they're all at 3.8 volts uh, and then once they are, put them down ready for the next flying day. There is also 
the modes, things like discharge in a lot of chargers that allows you to take energy out of the battery. Some of the chargers are very clever and if you are running the charger with a much larger battery will actually put the energy from the battery you're discharging back into the battery that's actually running the charger. But that's just handy, again, like we just looked at with that big device that I have that's uh, specific for discharging LiPos, lots of chargers will let you do that too. But to be honest, storage and discharge are the ones that you tend to use after a flying day. The last mode that some um, chargers are coming along with now is one called destroy and be very careful with this. When you get to the point where the battery has come to the end of its life, it's puffed up, it isn't performing as well, uh, then you need to completely discharge it typically before you get rid of it. That makes it a lot safer to handle. And I use this thing here. This is just an automotive bulb and I plug that into the XT60 connector and that completely discharges it. It'll take overnight, usually sits outside in the log burner uh, and just discharges while it does it in case anything bad happens. But you've also got the ability with some of the modern chargers to not only discharge it down to storage charge or three and a half volts, but actually to continue to discharge it until all of the energy is taken out of the pack. That is something you'd only do at once with each pack at the end of its life. So let's talk a little bit about charging tips. The first thing to think about is the fact that unless it actually says somewhere on the battery that you can charge at more than one C, that is the maximum that you can charge the pack at. What is one C? Well, that is the capacity of the battery uh, and that is the maximum amperage that you can set on your charger. And I wouldn't use any more than that, again, unless it explicitly says so on the battery. So I normally charge at 1C or just below 1C because that's actually slightly nicer for the pack. So this is a 2200 milliamp hour pack. So I would charge this at 2.2 amps. The other way you'll see the numbers written on the pack is this is a 1.3 amp hour pack. This is another 4S battery so I would charge this at 1.3 amps. So that's the trick. Always use the capacity as the guide. So a 5000 milliamp hour pack is going to be charged at 5 amps. A 4000 milliamp hour pack, guess what, is going to be charged at 4 amps. Something like an 850 milliamp hour pack is going to be charged at 0.85 of an amp. Hopefully that makes sense. That is the maximum that you would use, again, unless the battery explicitly says it. If I'm being nice to a battery, uh, I might charge it at less than 1C. It's going to take a little bit longer, uh, but the batteries will thank you for it. As I said before, I tend to only use the balance with the high quality batteries once every four or five goes and that keeps them in check. You'll notice that when you plug a battery into the charger, you'll be able to look at the individual cell voltages. If they're very close, then you can probably get away with a standard charge. If there is lots of difference uh, and they're not very close, then I would do a balanced charge. Again, the battery will thank you and last a lot longer. If you find that you have a battery that continually needs balanced charging after every flight, that probably needs that one of the cells is starting to come to the end of its life, its internal resistance is increasing, and it's having a tougher time when you're actually using the pack. If you find that is the case, I would uh, put a little red sticker or something on that pack, and if it continues to do that, then you know what, retire it. Uh, completely discharge it, cut the leads off, and then go and do the standard stuff and get it recycled. Don't, for the sake of a battery, put a model at risk. I know lots of friends who have lost quadcopters and planes and things by a battery just kind of giving up the ghost uh, when they're flying. It's not worth risking it. So if you find a battery is always has very different voltages in the cells when you put it on the charger, uh, that probably means it's not in great shape. And some cheaper batteries are like that straight out the gate. Last big tip, never leave a LiPo unattended. Ideally, get yourself something like a LiPo safe bag. If it is being charged and there is some the physical problem with the battery that results in it getting very hot, overheating and starting to outgas and potentially even burst into flames, having a LiPo battery will allow you to kind of uh, get rid of that and get it outside before anything happens. Touch wood, I've been using LiPo batteries now for 
15, 16 years and never had it happen. But then I'm really careful with my LiPo batteries and I look after them. And of course, when you are charging a LiPo battery, never ever leave it unattended. Always stay in the room with it because the time you walk away and then you forget it's charging is the time that one of the LiPo batteries will probably start to misbehave. So to finish off this little video, here are some quick LiPo golden rules that I personally follow here. That means that hopefully I'm going to continue to be safe and my batteries are going to work great for me. First of all, reiterate, never leave a LiPo unattended. Ideally use a LiPo safe bag when you are charging these things and uh, always have an easy way if you need to to get them outside and store them safely. Storage charge is 3.8 volts per cell. Uh, that is where they need to be. They will thank you for that. Think about where you're going to put them. Don't put them uh, near anything flammable. Just be careful. I put them in the garage in ammo boxes. I just nick the seals at the top so if one of them does start to gas it doesn't create a little bomb. But it does mean that if one of them has a problem the, uh, the problem's contained. Balance charge them every four or five times with good quality batteries that will be easily enough. Again, if you have batteries that consistently need balance charging and you always have one cell that's wildly out of balance, it's an indicator that battery is on its way out. Retire them also when they start to puff up. If they look like this battery here, just don't risk your models with it. Go and uh, discharge them fully and get them recycled. And that also goes for when they're damaged in a crash. It can be tempting if they look okay that you kind of continue with them. But it might be that if they've already been compromised and the cells are already deformed, the next crash might be enough to, uh, to cause a problem that's big enough for the thing to burst into flames. And not only will it take the battery, it'll also take the model and potentially half the field if it's nice and dry that the thing's landed in. And my last tip is if you are using a battery and you find your flight times are dropping off, so maybe you know the quadcopter used to fly for eight minutes with the battery and now it's kind of uh, telling you it needs to land after four and everything else on the model is still the same, I would check your battery. It's probably coming to the end of its life. And again, it's probably time to retire it. Again, I've had friends lose planes and quads by not realizing their batteries were getting tired. And usually that's because they're not being put down to storage charge and they're not having the tips used in this video and them kind of just letting go and the quadcopter dropping into water it seems to always be the way and disappearing out of their lives forever. So hopefully that's helpful for those of you that are new to the hobby and looking at LiPos. They are incredibly powerful batteries and they are fantastic for the modern hobby. Just treat them with respect, follow the tips in this video and you should be absolutely safe and have many years of happy flying with the ones that you buy. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media and if you're trying to learn about a subject then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.